Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. This episode... There we go. We're going once again with the Arnhem 44 Operation Market Garden board game, part two. So what we're going to look at here now, in this episode, we'll look at the rest of its sample turn, the disputed combat, German movement, and then of course reinforcements, which I know caused some confusion in the original rulebook, which by the way, I had a chance to take a look at the original rulebook versus the one I printed offline, and there are significant differences, especially in the illustrations of the examples of play. So just kind of bear that in mind um, as you go. The other thing I noticed, <laughs> because I was trying something different this time strategy-wise, um, I made a big blunder on was how I did the Allied reinforcements. I'll talk about that here in, this, in the initial deployment too, for that matter. I'll talk about that here in a few moments once we get into the turn a little bit more. So let's start off with phase 4.2, which involves both sides and everybody's involved here, resolve battles in disputed sectors. Now we don't have too many of those, but the difference between what we saw last episode, where of course battles are resolved as you try to move into a space, these ones of course involve battles that are already there. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at, I think about, I have about three of these on the map right now. And these ones are simultaneous, and also everybody uses the same numbers in the space. Okay, And again, there are numbers that are green, black, and white for each of the different units. Green for infantry, black for tanks, and of course white for artillery slash anti-tank guns. And again, I stress that, anti-tank guns, because... If an anti-tank gun, artillery piece, is by itself against infantry, it can't do anything other than be a target. Okay, So if there isn't a tank from the opposing side, then the guys there with the AT piece are just kind of like, la la la, la la la, kind of buying their time and hoping they survive. Okay, Now we'll start down here. And of course, remember also the other problem I had from yesterday or from last, well, that was yesterday actually, it was last episode. But from last episode, the other problem I have is no bridge here, no bridge here, no bridge here. So this whole waterway here, which is one of the smaller waterways, is blown. I hope to be able to show you a Bailey Bridge. I don't know if I'll be able to. We'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. But I don't think I'm going to have the horses to do it. Okay. But I still want to show you an example of how you're supposed to set it up, how it works, that kind of thing here uh, with this episode. Because once I'm done with this particular turn, there really won't be anything else to show. Okay. Let's get this show on the road. So, down here in this sector, we have one unit from the Wehrmacht up against a couple of Screaming Eagles. And again, both sides will roll their dice, and it is simultaneous. So, here comes the jet. The Germans rolled a 7 and a 9. Well, you need 4 or less, so that's no good. Alright, let's see here if the Parachutists, who get an extra die on the opening turn, um, in both phases, let's see if they can make this work. I think, well, hold on a second, just let me double check, but I'm pretty sure it said they get an extra die in all phases here. Oh, uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, where was that? I know they get an extra die for the one phase. You know what? I think they get it for this phase, too. Oh, here we go. 4.1 and 4.2. Yes, they get an extra one, but not for 5.2, which will be the next common combat one. All right, so let's see if they can hit anything. Looking for four or less. Well, we hit a three. That's good news. But remember, we'll still have to roll basically for damage is what you're really doing here. The other unit. Ah, unfortunately, just that one point of damage, maybe. Let's see. Remember, if it's a zero, there'll be no damage whatsoever. It's a three. Okay, so it is damage. Now, after contested spots when you have battles, then if somebody takes more damage, they basically have to take off. They have to withdraw, okay, at the end of the battle. So a unit loses half of its points or more, which it did. 
Okay, they took one hit point. Infantry only have two hit points. Then they have to withdraw. They have to pull out into a legitimate area. Okay, things you can't do is you can't cross any kind of bridge, canal, anything like that. You can't cross into enemy territory. So what I think I'll do with these Germans is I think I'll swing them out into here just to kind of sit out on the flank and wait. So, okay, that cleared that area, which is good because now I can think about a Bailey Bridge. Oh, the other thing about the Bailey Bridges too is that you don't have to build them where the old bridges used to be. Technically, I could build one right here if I wanted to. Okay, so it just has to be across a waterway. Okay, two spaces that straddle that particular spot. So don't have to build it exactly where the old bridges were, just for future reference there. Okay, let's keep sliding on up here because, you know, this is a huge map. Didn't exactly measure how long it is. All right, we also have this battle here, speaking of bridges, outside of this bridge here with the 82nd All-American Airborne. So, we'll let the Wehrmacht take their best shot here. And they missed. That's a six and a seven. And the All-American boys, they also missed. So everybody missed, so nobody goes anywhere. Nothing happened, okay? So you can have disputed spaces that don't have combat resolved out of it, okay? Last thing we got to do is come up here where the Red Devils are and deal with this situation here outside of Arnhem and see if we can resolve that battle there. Okay, so the British have three units here. And of course, it's four less for that. And the artillery piece won't be able to do anything because there are no tanks. Okay, remember, they could be a target, but that's it. All right, so let's see what the Germans can do. The Germans, five and eight. That is a whole lot of nothing. All right, so we've got three airborne units. They get to roll their dice again. We're trying for four less. Ooh, good, a pair of ones. That's excellent. Excellent, yes. Second Red Devil unit. Got a two, also helpful. And the last of the Red Devils has... Whoops. Lost that bonus die. That's okay, it was rolled a nine. I would have wanted it anyway. Good, a two and a one. So that's a lot of hits there. Maybe I can clear this whole space out of the enemy. So that is potentially five hits. And again, for the hits, what I'm just doing is I'm using a different, just a bunch of 10-sided dice that are random colors. Uh, I'm sticking with the colors that go with the game for the spaces. So like infantry is green dice, tanks black, and anti-tank guns white. So let's make sure we got this here. Okay, that's good. That's four, two, and five. And since we only have two units, it'll be odd and even. You always start with infantry whenever you're figuring out the one, two, three, or four, five, however many units you have. You always go infantry first, then tanks, then the field pieces, slash AT. All right, we got a six and a five. So the good news is we have pairs in both odd and even. We're going to destroy both of those German units. So we have cleared the area, and now we'll be ready to advance on the bridge ASAP, depending on what the Germans do. Okay? All right. So not too bad for... The contested combat phase. And I'm just double checking to make sure I don't have another space that has enemy units from both sides. No, I do not. Not. Okay. Alright. So, let's go ahead now and we'll move on to the next phase, which is the German movement phase. Okay? So the Germans can move their units two spaces for infantry and for field pieces, AT guns, and then tanks can move four spaces. All right, well down here, I've got these Germans at Eindhoven, which these bridges are important, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move them into here and then try to use them to blow these charges at the beginning of the next turn, turn two, which is the night of the 17th. Uh, which, of course, is when all this went down. Because at this point, Eindhoven is not as important because I've got a bunch of blown bridges up here. And if I can blow these two bridges, then I'll really slow them down. And Eindhoven will be moot, um, to be quite honest about it. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, remember, any unit adjacent to a bridge can either attempt to defuse or blast uh, the enemy there. So, both of these can move to... 
And the interesting thing about this game also too is that moving across bridges is free. So I don't even need, oops, sorry about that. I thought it was tilted more down that way. I don't even need to spend a movement point across the bridge, okay? So I'll go one and two and one and two. All right, so far so good. Now up here, I think what I'm going to do with the Germans up here, since you have to have both sides secured to build a Braley Bridge, I'm going to spread these guys out and see if I can really force the Allies to focus on only one area to try and build their Braley Bridge. This little guy down here, um, I mean, I just may leave him down here to kind of, I don't know what I'm going to do with this guy, to be honest. I guess just to have him head towards the bridge, huh, just in case. All right, we'll have him head towards the bridge. So one, two, he's running... There, I ran all the way home. Whoops. Okay, so we'll leave the tank here. Now, the only problem is, remember, artillery pieces cannot defend by themselves. That's true. So, now the tank, notice again how some of the interesting things about the map here. The tank can basically stop the bridge from being built all in this green area, although you could still build it here in the village. So maybe I should let those guys stay in the village. We'll move these guys down here to the river. So basically now that'll block off this whole area of the river from building the bridge. Unless, of course, the Screaming Eagles can get down here and kick some butt. And now these guys over here, I could do one of two things with them. I could move these guys toward this way, particularly the tank, and try to really gum up the works and force the Allies to build the Bailey Bridge way over here. Or, of course, I could have them fall back to Grave and basically beef up this end of the bridge and say, come get some and just wait for the allies to show up. Um, I'm tempted to reinforce this bridge because if you look up here, this darker one here, you have to build the bigger Braley, Braley bridges. So basically there's three major rivers you've got going on here in the game. You've got the Moss, the Wall, and then of course the Rhine itself. Now these ones require the big Bailey bridges. Big Bailey bridges take a long time to build, twice as long as the small. The other water routes here, the canals and the smaller streams and stuff, they only require the smaller Bailey bridges, which are much easier to build. Okay, so you know what else I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drop back and drop these guys all into grave, because remember each space can have up to nine units per side. Uh, I'm not gonna do anything over here. I'm gonna go ahead and just hold everybody still here. Now up here at Arnhem, I think what I'm going to do is try to protect the bridge since the paratroopers were not able to get over there as fast as possible. And I guess this one drawback to this game is that <clears throat> unlike the Germans that, you know, the paratroopers first dropped, you know, you know what's going on. You know that they're after Arnhem. You know that's the prize. Now, of course, you could mitigate this by having the Germans have to randomly deploy units north of the Rhine. You could assign a number to each of those spaces that are above the Rhine. Um, but otherwise, it does it does kind of make things a little different. And of course, the Rhine bridge is the absolute prize. All the bridges have a victory point value attached to them, and the Arnhem bridge is the big one. Let me show you here on the card. Okay. So it even tells you which bridges are major and, and small. But see, Arnhem is worth 42, the south side of the Arnhem Bridge. The Arnhem Bridge um, to the east, this one here is a small one. It only has a value of one. So um, that's not, yeah, yeah, that's not, that's this bridge over here. That's, um, yeah, that's got to be this one here because it's a small bridge. This one, of course, is a big bridge because it's somehow, whoops, got this bumped a little bit, but this is a double, and that, of course, makes it a large bridge. But anyways, you can see the big prizes are, you know, Arnhem, Nijmegen, and Grave, and then everything else is, you know, very small value, as it were, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move these guys, one, two, into the prize. So Roy's going to have to work at this a little bit harder here. And same thing with the tank. One, two, in there to Arnhem. Okay. All right. So not so good. All right. Now we move on to phase 5.2. Resolve battles in disputed sectors. We only have a couple of those here, so we'll quickly do those. Um, actually, the only one we have left, now that I'm really looking at this carefully, is over here to the north of the Moss, uh, where the 82nd Airborne is trying to fight to, to get control those bridges there. All right, now the airborne do not get an extra die, as we 
double checked here a little bit ago. So let's see what the Wehrmacht can do. The Wehrmacht rolled a 2 and an 8, so that causes potentially one point of damage. We'll see if that's confirmed. Yes, it is. So one point of damage. And then, of course, the airborne troops. Ooh, they did a 2 and a 1, so potentially they have destroyed the German unit. And they have. It was not a zero, and zero is the only number that can screw you up. So this actually went well for it. Okay, disputed combat is mandatory, by the way, too. You cannot turn that down. All right. um, that is not allowed. All right. So, all right. Now, next phase would be the weather phase. Now, that only happens on the dark spaces, the night turns. Night turns are not quite what you would think they'd be in a regular war game. You actually can still do a lot on night terms, um, which seems a little weird, but, um, you know, I mean, given what this game is going for, as, as how it portrays Market Garden, I mean, I think it's appropriate. Okay, and again, you know, if you're looking for a more realistic game, quite frankly, if you haven't figured it out already by now, by watching this, this game is not for you, if that's what you're trying to do. Okay? All right. So, we don't have to worry about the weather. All right, now, reinforcements. So let's talk about reinforcements. Let me come down here and zoom in on the bottom of the map so we can talk about the allied reinforcements. Okay? Sorry about that glare there. So let's try and see if we can get the glare out of the way. Oh, the glare's following us. Huh. I don't know. Well, I guess that's part of the price to pay with the stronger light bulbs. I guess is the best way to put that. Okay? Now, when it comes to reinforcements... The Allies basically have a couple of options. Although at the beginning of the game, there really isn't a choice. This green track over here that you see is where you would take guys off the map to help build the bridges. These would be your engineers. Okay. Now, during the reinforcement phase, if you have units on here, you could roll either to bring these guys back into the game, or you can roll a black die to bring these reinforcements here. Now, as you can see from all the plastic guys here, you get to choose which reinforcements show up at the beginning, and then if you can see here with the silhouettes down here, later on, then it is dictated to you who is showing up when, okay? Once this track is filled up here, once the engineer track is filled up, okay, you can't build any more bridges. So basically what you can do is either build two small Bailey bridges, you need three engineers apiece, or you can build one small, three, and one big, five, which is eight. But once that track's filled, you cannot build any more bridges until you bring those guys back into the game. Okay. Now, again, we don't have any engineers to worry about here, so we're just going to roll one black die, and we'll see how many reinforcements we get. Okay. And then they'll be placed in any one of the three starting sectors right in front of them, depending on nationality, except, of course, the Americans. As you can see, the Yankees have to start here because there's the American flag. So let's find out how many units we're going to get. Three. We got three. Three. So we start here, one, two, and three. Three infantry. Okay. So I have to put the American here. I have no choice. And then <clears throat> I want to put the British here because, of course, I basically want to come to this side of the board to try and build those Bailey bridges where the Germans aren't concentrated right now. Remember, they're concentrated on the eastern side of the board, so I'm going to try and advance up here to the west and try to build bridges. Okay, So that's how the Allies' reinforcements go. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but in the original rulebook, it didn't talk about this. The one online that you can print that's on available on BoardGameGeek, that one actually has a diagram illustration to show you how to use the reinforcement tracks. All right, now, let's come this way. Again, sorry about having to move you, but the board is just so long. And let's take a look at the Germans. All right, so let's zoom in here. First of all, let's start down here. Now, the Germans have two different types of reinforcements in the game. They have above the Rhine, this gray arrow, and below the Rhine. As you can see, the track lines up perfectly here with the Rhine, okay? And then, of course, you've got your game turn number. So here's turn one. So on turn one, the Germans will get to place an infantry, a tank, and I think that's a one. That's the one bad thing about this is it's hard to read the numbers on there. Uh, let me see. Um, actually, I think there's two tanks there. Yeah, two infantry, two tanks, and an infantry. That's, that's the one thing I don't like is not being able to read those numbers. They're so light. They should have... <coughs> Excuse me. They should have made them darker. Okay, so above the Rhine, 
I'll be able to place these units. And these units can be placed in anywhere where there is a little Nazi flag. And yes, if you um, believe it or not, even though this thing is produced in Europe and produced in the Netherlands, that's right, it's there, right? There it is. Speaking of which, can you see the numbers there now? Yeah, you kind of can. See them there? See, there's the infantry, there's the artillery, and there's the tanks, okay? So, there's those set of symbols on both ends of the map. So, depending on where you want to bring your troops in, you can either bring them here or bring them in over here. Now, of course, over here on the other side of the map that I'm referencing right now, let me show you, you don't have as many symbols. You only have two over here. But, of course, the other part of it is you got to have control of the bridge to get across this. Although infantry can cross this small bridge using all their movement points, but remember, artillery and tanks cannot cross any kind of river, stream, or canal without a bridge. Period. That's it. Okay. There are the ferries here that the Germans can use, but um, they're basically automatically destroyed when the Allies get within striking distance of them. Okay. That's just the rule in the game. I'm not sure exactly why. I assume the Germans, it was easy to do that. Um, you know, having ridden on a ferry myself, I can see where you could probably you know, screw that up pretty quick without too much trouble. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and place two infantry, two tanks, and an artillery for opening turn here north of the Rhine. And then on the bottom half of the Rhine, or the bottom half of the map below the Rhine, let me just go ahead and show you over here. We have on this opening turn, we'll have one infantry, and then we have a charge. Now, when you get more dynamite, when you get more explosives, then you can keep them in reserve, and then on step, uh, what step is it? Here we go, step 3.3, then the Germans can strive to go ahead and set up charges where they have control of one end of the bridge and place them um, at that time. So basically when you get these explosives, you can hold on to them until such time as you wish to use them. And remember, you cannot put dynamite um, packages, if you will, that are higher than four on major bridges. And again, the major bridges are all the ones that have two bridges connected to them, which again, there's basically just those couple that are in the game, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and let's zoom back out. And I'll go ahead and set up my Germans here. So since I do have control of this bridge over here, I'm going to go ahead and put the Germans in these spaces here and try to cross the bridge and basically dig in and arm them. And again, you know, you could assign random numbers if you wanted, you know, to kind of simulate the first opening day chaos if you wanted to, because again, you know, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's kind of like fighting some other battles like Chancellorsville and Antietam and Inchon, you know, you know way too much compared to the historical counterparts, and it makes it kind of easy to defend. All right, so I'm going to put I'm gonna put them all in the same spot, and basically we're going to haul dupa for the bridge. So two infantry, and you have to be careful not to put them in the woods, because, see, the woods are in the middle of that space there, which I think is actually kind of neat in some ways. And you get two tanks to go with your two infantry, and I'm just going to bring a whole lot of hurt if I can this next turn, I'm going to bring a whole lot of hurt on the Red Devils that are here. So that could be a little tricky before they get their next drop of troopers, which of course will happen on turn three, which of course is you know still another whole turn off. Now below the bridges, I will take out of the supply, I'll take one of the dynamites and I just put it kind of here by the track to remind myself of that. And you only get one infantry south of the Rhine. And again, any one of the little swastika marked places, you can go ahead and deploy them. Now, I could, of course, do it over here. And actually, it's not a bad idea, because if I deploy it over here, then again, I can prevent, you know, I'm really kind of funneling that Bailey Bridge over there. So you know what? That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to slow them down, because let's face it, speed, you know, is the essence of this game. You have to have speed. Okay. All right. So there's the Germans. And they are placed, and that is a complete turn. We are ready now to move on to turn two. Okay? All right. Now, the one thing I didn't show you on turn one, because you're not allowed to do it on turn one, is artillery barrages. Now, with artillery pieces, and of course, we're going to get a lot of that down here. So let's zoom in on the artillery pieces I have down here for the Allies. Basically, artillery pieces can fire up to two spaces away, provided there's nobody in their space. 
and they use the target number there to um, score, to, to figure out if they score hits. Elimination is the only thing that counts, so you do have to be careful what you're firing at, uh, especially if you're fighting a very crowded space, the hits will be randomly assigned, so you do have to watch what you're um, firing at if you want to try and destroy something, because if you only injure it like a tank, if you only get three hits on the tank, guess what? You didn't get the fourth hit, so the tank has managed to lick its wounds. You know, and I guess you could look at that as, you know, the, the whole injury concept. I guess you could also look at that as disruption, temporary disruption, where everybody, you know, he's kind of slammed, hammered, smacked around a little bit, and then you kind of, you know, get your bearings back together. You know, almost like, um, for lack of a better analogy, like a football team that at the beginning of the game, the defense is like, what the heck is the offense running? We've we never seen this in any of the film and stuff. But then after a little bit, they're like, oh, okay, wait a minute. Ah, let's make this adjustment. I guess you could look at it that way, I suppose. So you could look at it not only as losses, but also as like just plain old disruption too. And if you look at it that way, and I think that is a viable way to look at it, then it does make more sense, okay? Each artillery piece will get to roll six dice, targeting units up to two spaces away, okay? And of course, you can target different spots. The artillery pieces, like the two here in the forest, they don't necessarily have to target this. Well, actually, they can't, one, two. So they can't even do that. But let's say this... There was, oh, there's two pieces here. Perfect. So one, two. Now, they both wouldn't have to target that if they didn't want to, but um, you do have to make your choices and decisions. Now, the rules don't specifically say whether you have to declare your artillery targets ahead of time. I usually do because I think that's more realistic and it makes for a more interesting game. That's just my personal opinion, and I'm sticking to it. So actually... Because of the way I set up the German defenses, we're probably not going to see a whole lot of barrages here, especially down here. But actually, up here on the northern end of the map, the Germans actually will have a better, much better chance of doing some barrages. And again, I did kind of screw up with the Bailey Bridge business because um, I should have had more infantry. I, I, I was thinking about tanks too much because I've always loved tanks since I was a kid. That's part of how I got into... World War II history was I enjoyed tanks right off the bat. You know, in uh, my younger years, when my peers were talking about the specifications of, you know, cars and stuff, you know, I knew those kind of specifications for World War II tanks and even modern tanks, too. Um, yeah, I know, whatever, odd duck. Anyway, eh, so what? Anyhow, point being that I kind of was like, I'm going to run my tanks this time and see what happens. So that's the nice thing about this game, too, is that it's very easy to set up and restart if you're like, shoot, that didn't work, or shoot, you know what, I know I'm not going to be able to make it. So, um... I do like the amount of units here for the time investment versus to portray the whole situation. Uh, it, it just feels good for me. And again, this may not be your cup of tea, but I've been looking for a market garden game for quite a while, and I have tried quite a few of them. And this one looks like it's actually going to be my go-to game. Um, I'm enjoying it that much. So I'm very glad I stumbled across that um, with, uh, with the Board Game Geek working on your table list. Okay, so moving along here, so we don't make this video too long. So we'll go ahead and have these two artillery pieces target this German infantry here. Now the value is six, so I need six or less. But remember, even if I were to roll 12 hits, we still have to roll the hit dice because remember a zero would be like, oops, did not hit. So three hits. I'm just going to target with both field pieces. So this is uh, five hits. We have zero. Ooh, a couple of misses. There, three misses. There. So that's a three, five. So it was three, six, nine. A couple more hits there. And then the last bit, 12. And we got two more hits there. So we have a total of two, four, six, eight, nine potential hits. All we need is two confirmed. And we just had two confirmed. A one and a three. So that's the end of these guys. They are blasted into oblivion. Alright. Now let's take a look here at the Germans. Alright, you know what? I'm going to take this German artillery piece over here. And let me go ahead and come back out some to show the bigger picture of what's going on here. I'm going to take this German artillery piece here and fire 
at this allied unit here, see if I can get them blasted off that end of the bridge so they won't have a chance to try and defuse the weapon there. Now they only get three shots, so here we go. Six or less. Ooh, lucky allies, 887. What? Is that a very bad, bad artillery? Okay, the second roll was kinder, 2-5, so there still is a chance that they could destroy them. But if either one of these hit dice is a zero, wah, wah, wah. Ah, no such luck. It was a four and a seven. So, bollocks, I lost those guys there. Okay, all right, moving along here. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and use the German artillery piece in grave here. I'm going to try and blast these guys into oblivion here, uh, just to kind of whittle this down some, because again, well, let's see, one... Actually, you know what? Those guys are in range, aren't they? One, two. See, that's one of the things about the map. The way the map is configured, you kind of have to really study it a little bit to see how each space is kind of touching and how they're connected and stuff. It's very interesting, um, the way this, that this the map has been designed. So let's see. Six here, but then I need to get mostly all hits. And that is six or less. If I go up here, it's still six or less, and there's only one unit to target. You know what? Let's target the guys behind. So that way I can go ahead and try to clear that out. So, ooh, 774. That's only one hit, potentially one hit. Ooh, 115. Okay, so that's four hits. So, good chance that, unless I get a bunch of zeros, my hero, they're screwed. Yep, two threes, a six, and a seven. Thanks for playing. Here's some nice party gifts for you. Turtle wax for a shiny or turtle. So, sorry, all American boys. The all American unit is near and dear to my heart. My best friend from high school. Um, he. Uh, oh, let's see. What's the best way to put it? Um, he wasn't as fortunate as, as I was, I guess to put it that way. And uh, he ended up going to the Army so he could get money for college. And he ended up in the, 100, or the 82nd Airborne, the All American Airborne. So um, that one, that unit always kind of holds a, a special place near and dear to me. So, okay, so that's unfortunate that the German artillery was able to do that. Now remember, we have artillery pieces up here. Well, we had that one that was destroyed by the Red Devils. We have this one here. One, two. Ooh, not quite enough because the way this is set up, the force comes down here. So I can hit South Arnhem. But, and I can hit this green space, but I can't hit the one up here. I guess I could blast the forest and try to, to get those guys in the forest. Uh, let's see. The forest value, though, is two or less. Well, nothing ventured, nothing gained, right? I mean, otherwise, just going to stand around with a bunch of ammunition going, well, what should we do now? I don't know, man. Okay, so let's just fire them off. Why not? Need two or less, which technically means a one or a two. Well, I did get a one. I also got a zero. And let's try the other set. Okay, so there's only going to be at the most an injury, and again, this is all or nothing, um, Frank Sinatra style. So basically that means nothing's going to happen to that unit. They don't even have to fall back, unlike combat, where you do have to um, withdraw depending on how many hits are inflicted, that kind of thing. Okay? So, um, now I did those all kind of at the same time. Technically, in a two-player game, you would go back and forth, and I probably should have done that here, too. But I just wanted to show you how it how it works, the mechanic works for the barrage, okay? All right. Now, we don't have any more airborne troops to land, okay? But when it comes to daily supplies, then when they're dropped, you're going to do the same procedure I did with the airborne troops in Part 1. You're going to roll the die, figure out where the supplies come down. And again, you can grab them if you're in the same space or adjacent to that space, or move through it. However, the exception is supplies that are separated from units by a waterway of any kind. You cannot automatically just pick those supplies up by being next to it. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that because there's nothing coming down until turn three, and then supplies um, are not actually dropped until turn five each turn. And of course, the poles don't show up until turn seven, much much later in the game. Okay, so don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, Okay, supplies have to be distributed to the four groups. So then we're going to go over here to our headquarters and just basically take one supply off each one and put it back in 
the common supply. That's a lot of supply. And that's it. And again, it doesn't matter how far, because like, see, this is one thing I, I wonder a little bit about, but I don't know if tinkering with it would make a difference, because if you look here, where the All-Americans are, I mean, you got three units on this side of the canal, and you got one over here. So, despite the fact that there's a German unit in between, they were able to get supplies to both sides. It does seem a little hokey, but uh, that's the way that kind of goes. So, I guess I guess the thinking probably is that you're going to try and concentrate your airborne as much as you can so they can survive, grab bridges, that kind of thing. So, I guess that's logical when you look at it that way. Okay? And now we're back to diffusing explosives, etc., etc. Okay? So... All right, now, one last thing I'll do here, and I'll just show it over here and zoom in. Um, let's see. I'll zoom in right here. Let's do that. We'll come in right over here above where this German unit is, because then they can't bother us. So, so if I was going to build a Bailey Bridge, okay, I have to do a couple of things. First of all, on one side of the bridge or the other, and mostly it's going to be from the south, because you can't count guys until, airborne guys I should say, until they make contact with the uh, 30 core coming up, okay? So, so like these guys over here, that, let's see if they're in the shot, yeah, they're in the shot. These guys over here, if this third guy was over here, they couldn't build a Bailey Bridge because they're not in contact yet, okay? Because of course this bridge was blown, okay? But let's say, for example, that Oh, hold on, I grabbed a German piece. We have a saboteur in our midst. But let's say for argument's sake that there was three guys in this space here. Okay, so in order to do, build the bridge, you would go ahead and pull these three guys off the map and take them to that green track I showed you a little bit ago. Then, you would lay down the Bailey Bridge on its unfinished side, like this. And for the small Bailey Bridge, you would put down... 10 of these little counters that are labeled C, okay, on them. Uh, hopefully you can see them, okay. Let me try and bring them over here. The only reason I'm bringing them over here to show you is because this was the biggest counter manhunt I've seen on Board Game Geek. Every once in a while, you know, people find counters and they're like, what game does this come from? Somebody help me out. And um, Judd Vance, who's very active board game geek, war gaming community in, law, in general, he put these on It's like, look, I found these, I don't know where they go. I think we all set a record with it took 11 days, I believe, if I looked and did the math right. 11 days and six pages before somebody figured out what game they belonged to. And that happened to be me and it was totally by accident. So if you remember my unboxing video when I had that moment where I was like, whoa, wait a minute. That's because when I, I did, and I, when I do unboxing videos, I usually don't look in ahead of time. So that way you can get my honest, first, raw reaction to what I'm seeing too. And I was just like, holy smoke, there they are. So, of course, then I went on the thread and said, hey, Eureka, I found them. Um, and this is the game they belong to. And, and Judd had owned that game a while back, but he had traded it away because he had another Market Garden game that he liked better. So those little C counters <laughs> were the biggest, as far as I know, the biggest counter manhunt, so to speak, in BGG history, trying to find out where do these counters belong to. So you put them there, and you put 10 of them, okay, next to the bridge. Then each turn, you roll a die. You don't do it on the first turn, whenever you are initially building the bridge and put the counters down. And then whatever number you roll, say four, you subtract it, and you keep subtracting them away each turn until there's none left. So that does mean that zero, yes, is a zero, which is nasty because you didn't remove anything. So I guess you could say that there was a major FUBAR uh, snafu situation, and that's why your bridge didn't get built, okay? Now, I will say this too, because I thought about this with the rules for a little bit, because I was kind of curious, because since there's small and large Bailey bridges, I was like, now wait a second, hold on. So do you need a large Bailey bridge to support tanks? And my gut says no, because I think the designers, their intention was, large and small based on the width of the river and or stream canal in question. So the small Bailey bridges work for the streams and canals because they're not as wide as of course the Moss, the Wall and the Rhine, which again are the dark blue ones, they are the rivers. 
and they're the ones who need the big Bailey bridges and that requires 20 counters and five engineers and that's going to take you some time okay uh, both ends of the bridge have to be free of the enemy so for example what I have set up here if let's say that once I start building this um, you know one of the German units nearby like this guy over here goes ach mein Gott and realizes there's a bridge being built and they go to the other side Schweinen then er, you hit the brakes now you wouldn't change anything let's say you had four of those construction counters left the four would stay there the bridge would stay there but construction will be temporarily halted until you clean um, those Germans out and then continue from there so that's how the Bailey bridges basically work um, and again how you get uh, the engineers set up and then the reinforcement choices you have to make you know if you want to clear space so you can build another bridge further down the road which of course in this case road is an accurate word because there was one road seriously that's the one thing I never will understand about this operation I mean I can see everybody being like okay we'll drop the airborne troops cool we'll have them grab the bridges cool yeah we'll even try to grab the big one over at the Rhine cool and we're gonna then relieve the airborne troops yes and we're gonna send an entire corps perfect and they're gonna use one road <gasps> What, what, wait, wait, what did you just say? Wait, I'm, I'm sorry. I, did you say one road? I didn't say roads, right? Z, roads, z, z. No, dude, road, road, road. Mm, I, I, because you know, if you've seen A Bridge Too Far, General Horrocks, um, played by, um, oh, shoot, uh, Edward Fox, that's who plays him. You know, when they're talking there, I, I think it's his character who says it was the one road. Maybe it was one of the other characters that said it was the one road. But, yeah, that to me, that was that's where the plan went downhill. Because, uh, mm, 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 mm. okay. So, anyway, so there you go. There is a playthrough of all phases of a turn of this game. Um, again, for me... I this will be a keeper this hits a sweet spot for me I like where it is I like the balance between giving me the feel because right now I'm extremely frustrated trying to get these doggone bridges built um, oh who was it oh shoot who was the guy that was talking about Bailey Bridges oh I can picture his face Elliot Goulet is that is that what his name was uh I can't remember. But anyway, he was the guy that was talking about building the bridges and um, you know, the Bailey Bridge and stuff in the movie A Bridge Too Far, which, by the way, um, is one of the most accurate war movies ever made. Um, they really strived hard to make that as accurate as possible. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, if I remember, and I don't know why they stopped doing this, this was actually one of the more decent programs on the History Channel, the History versus Hollywood. They had that where they showed a movie, you know, a history movie and then had you know experts commenting on what was accurate what was inaccurate about it and stuff and that one I remember watching it uh, that particular episode and then they all were like this you know this was literally accurate uh, even one scene where when they the famous scene at the bridge when the Germans say about the surrender and the British are like we don't have the proper facilities we can't accept your surrender uh, when they were making the movie I guess the director was like, you know what, it'd be more dramatic for having this guy to say it. And the guys who lived it and stuff, they were like, no, no, no way, man. That's not what happened. You need to have this guy say it. And I think the producer was the one who got in on it was like, yeah, you know what, no, no, no. We're not changing things. We're going to make this accurate. I want this to be accurate. And that was that, as I recall, um, how that went down. So, okay. So there you go. Now, next episode, which might be a little while, um, to be honest, because once I'm done with this, uh, REF is calling my name for a 25th play. I haven't played that for a while. I haven't played it, I think, in a year and a half, almost two years. So, of course, I've already done a video of that. You can check that out if you want. Um, so probably the next time I'll see you will be from the sands of North Africa. While I try the World at War um, issue I picked up with my latest bundle of games uh, with the... Uh, Drive Deep, Rommel's Drive on, on the Suez, I believe is what that game is actually called, which is similar to Patton's Third Army, if you're familiar with that game from one of the other World of War issues, which I played 
and I've enjoyed. Um, I just don't visit the Western Front, if you will, as often as I visit the Eastern Front when it comes to uh, the Second World War in Europe. So, well, that's probably when I'll see you next, and that probably will be a few weeks off, I would imagine, uh, at least. We'll see. Maybe this will be my last video for August. Maybe it won't. I can't say for sure yet. So just kind of stay tuned. Or I might, you know, do something in between. Um, I've been thinking about doing some other videos, like my five favorite World War II biographies, you know, uh, of of different individuals I've read. Um, you know, like that. I might do something like that. Or, you know, my five favorite Pacific books or something. So, we'll see. Um, anyway, so there you go. There is a full turn. I hope I explained things well enough. And I think I got things accurate enough for... Oops, we got to zoom back out. Sorry about that. Hold on. Nope. There we go. Well, we are zoomed out. All right. For Arnhem 44, the Operation Market Garden game. Again, from MDVC Games. Okay. All right, so... Again, after this, I'm going to fly the Unfriendly Skies uh, over top of England. And uh, again, probably more than likely, the next time I see y'all will be, well, here. This, which is not the latest issue. I believe there's an issue that came out already after this one. But uh, this is the one I'm, I'm talking about here, number 78. So, all right, as always, I thank you all for watching. And this has been Tim Korchnoy from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching and I'll see you again hanging out with um, Rommel or maybe I'll fly around and surprise inspection at spots. Um, I remember one story about Rommel because Rommel was one of the first military leaders I really read a biography about and studied quite a bit about him and Patton um, were kind of my initiation into World War II. And I remember a story about Rommel flying around and to check different um, locations of his front and one of the commanders was <laughs> was still sleeping when he got there and Rommel showed up and was like what do you expect me to bring you breakfast in bed so um, it's kind of a cool story you know whether it's true or not mm, sounds like something he would do though so. all right anyway probably we'll see you next is from the shifting sands of North Africa so again as always thanks for watching I'll see you next time